how these instructions get to be specified. And then guys, just to recap what we've done, right? We are done now. To recap what we've done here. Um, we, we, we discussed this whole notion. We started a discussion for this particular part, a discussion with the different types of instructions. Fundamentally, MIPS has three types of instructions, R format, I format, J format. When you see code fragment like this, you must be able to tell us to say which one of these is R format and I format, right? You can clearly see I, you know, I, uh, R, R, I. Um, <clears throat> well, we've just seen J format here, jump and link, right? We discussed jump as well. Uh, we also, we also discussed this whole notion of so-called pseudo instructions, effectively, instructions that cannot be executed by the CPU, or rather instructions that have to be converted into a form that the CPU is able to execute, right? A whole bunch of them, right? Um, we first introduced the pseudo instructions, even though we didn't know that LI was a pseudo instruction, we discussed LI, load immediate, this is a pseudo instruction, right? Another pseudo instruction we have here is uh, the unconditional branch, right? As far as the CPU is concerned, the CPU implemented using MIPS instruction set, there's no such thing as a B, uh, B. Right, BGT, no such thing as BGT, right? It has to be converted into equivalent bare instruction. Um, right, so we should be able to, you know, kind of explain the differences between bare instructions and pseudo instructions here. Um, and then we, we discuss some, not all of them, some system calls, there are a lot of them. The system calls specific to working with files. For the most part, when you're writing computer programs, it's either you're manipulating files, right? Writing to a file, reading to a file, something. There are system calls for that. You, you, are, you might want to go and explore further to see how that works, but we just narrow down on the simpler ones, you know, how to print a string, how to read a, uh, an integer, how to um, print an integer, things of that nature. And I take our point was really how you go about requesting a specific service, a desired service. We also mentioned that Typically, if this is the exam, or in fact, if you're doing this in real life, you have access to reference material. Could be a table, could be documentation, reference documentation that specifies exactly how you go about using a particular system call, right? Um, straightforward here, really. You must know. If you want to gracefully exit, what do I do if I have a table? What must I do? If I want to print, what must I do, right? Turns out that you go through a different sequence of events. In certain instances, you must specify addresses. In certain instances, uh, you must r uh, read values into registers like V0, for instance, right? Mm? So don't forget that. And then we discussed, uh, you know, uh, program flow here. How do you divert program flow? You know, uh, we introduced this whole notion of Boolean expressions, really expressions that result into yes or no, or true or false, or one or zero or something. And two main things we discuss in conditional branching and conditional branching, right? For conditional branching, you must have, typically you are, you are using, implicitly I guess, you are using a Boolean operator using two operands. The result is going to be true or false. PGT, dollar sign eight, comma dollar sign nine. The thing will either be true or false, or yes or no. BLT, SLT, right? All these things here. So it's fundamentally, it's, it's, it's a, what happens um, when that particular expression results or evaluates to true, and what happens if it results to false. In this particular example, what happens when this is not, when, uh, in line number 22, when the value in 12 is not equal to the value in, I don't know if this is eight, we shall not branch to count even, right? So program flow. Uh, and then we finally, last week we had a discussion of uh, loops, they're going now. We had the discussion of loops where uh, we're saying that instances when we want to do the same thing over and over again. Repetition, very key and important concept in programming and we're able to implement this, right? In MIPS, we're able to simulate what a computer does behind the scenes. You write your programming language in a high level, high level language and just say for the value, I trade through this sequence of events, but behind the scenes there's a whole bunch of things that are happening as far as the computer is concerned, right? And really, 
the whole process involves nothing more than implement, implementation of loops. Initialization of the values. Specification of the branch condition. Some processing that is involved. Modification of initial values. And then you branch, you repeat the loop. You can repeat the loop either using the pseudo instruction B, B followed by the label of the loop that you're executing, or if you want, J followed by the label itself. One and the same thing. Is this fine, guys? And then finally today, I mean, we talked about this, the importance of deduplicating code, really. Uh, just factor out common functionality. Yes, Andrew, and then. How do you mean? If you have, for example, a specific problem, maybe you're doing a different type of specify. For example, you go to a procedure, and then you are done using that procedure and need to go with another, another instruction that helps you improve the whole thing. Yes. I don't know if I get your, your question here, but what you're saying is you implement a loop. Is it possible to use a procedure within the loop? Yes. So if in the procedure, if, if in the loop what you're doing is you're printing those natural numbers. Remember the example where we're printing natural numbers? Implement, not that it would make sense anyway, but implement a procedure that prints an integer. And then within the body of the loop, just say JAL, the name of the procedure that prints the integer. You see, for you to understand this, besides practice, you want to form a mental picture of what's happening. Especially when it comes to program flow here, right? Just reading won't help here, I'm sorry. But See, just form a mental picture of what's happening if you feed it actual numbers here. If start from the initial value, if this is zero, blah, 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 what's happening here, you know, what happens to the values in eight, and you know, when I loop the second time, what's happening? How many times am I going to loop? How many times am I going to loop? I don't know, right? How many times? You should be able to do this, right? Uh. Is this, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yes, oh sorry. I